Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna have a little how-to video tutorial. Uh, this one is gonna be how to turn your Pine 64 into a retro gaming system that'll allow you to play all of your favorite uh, Nintendo games, Sega games, and pretty much anything, PlayStation 1, possibly even PlayStation 2. And uh, you're also gonna be able to use one of these, the PlayStation 3 controller or the PlayStation 4 controller. And as you can see, everything's working perfectly fine. Button mapping's pretty decent. Quality for video is also pretty good. About as good as it's going to get for uh, what we're working with here, which is uh, the equivalent of everything you would see in the normal gaming systems. So uh, stick around, we'll show you how to do this. Okay, so before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about the Pine 64 boards and what uh, is going to work and what's not going to work with this. Um, I highly recommend using the 1 gig or higher boards um, because you're going to need to run Android on this in the background uh, you know, as your main operating system in order to get these emulators to work. Uh, I think there's even emulators for the uh, Linux systems, but again, you know, you're running a full operating system and then the emulators, so you're definitely going to need uh, that little bit of power. You might be able to pull it off with the 512 boards, not 100% sure on that. I mean, it's probably going to be laggy if you can, so definitely start with a 1 gig board or higher when doing this. Um, it's just going to run that much better and smoother for you. It's going to make everything that you're trying to do uh, a lot easier um, because you do have to take quite a few steps of uh, jumping around, getting these different emulators, and then downloading the games. And you know, you're not going to want to sit there and wait for the screens to load forever and ever. So uh, definitely use the five, uh, the one gig or the two gig. Stay away from the 512 if you can help it. If not, go ahead, give it a try. And if it does work, great. Let me know in the comments and uh, help out the other people. Um, so let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so in this tutorial, as I mentioned before, we're going to show you how to make a retro gaming system out of your Pine 64. Uh, this will allow you to play Nintendo games, Sega games, uh, PlayStation 1, possibly even PlayStation 2, uh, Sega Saturn, Sega CD, all those crazy uh, old systems that uh, old people like me, I'm 34, about turned 35, love, grew up with, and uh, obviously if you want the best experience, you're going to want to go with one of those, one of the old retro systems. Uh, you can find those on eBay. Uh, a lot of times you'll find a system that has uh, a whole lot of games with it, like 20, 30, 40 games, some crazy number like that. You can get them pretty cheap too for like 100 bucks. Uh, you can also see I got a PlayStation 2, got the GameCube there, PlayStation 4. Uh, that right there is my uh, home media PC. If uh, you guys want to learn more about that, just uh, leave a couple of comments below and I'll make a video about my build on that. So, to do this, all we're going to need is our Pine 64 board, a PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4 controller, and you're going to have to load. Uh, Android on here. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, uh, I'll put a link to my video on showing you how to do that. And uh, once you get Android loaded, uh, we can go ahead and get started. Alright, so to get started, we're going to need a few apps from the uh, Play Store there. Um, one of these is actually a pay-for app, uh, the 6-axis controller. However, you can get that for free. I'm not going to tell you how or what you have to do just to kind of look at my screen and see that one of these isn't like the other. So, uh, you know, go in there and use it at your own risk. Uh, you got to be careful, but uh, you can get pretty much about anything for free there. Um, but I do uh, recommend you actually pay for these things uh, if you have the money to do so. So, with this, uh, this is going to allow you to connect your PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 controllers to your Pine 64 board. Um, you can also do this with the Xbox controllers. Uh, but you're going to need a different app. Uh, this one doesn't support it, so you can do it. Uh, I just don't have access to the 360 controllers, or any Xbox controllers for that matter. Um, so you're kind of on your own there, but everything else is pretty much the same. You just need to do that a little bit differently. Uh, the first thing I'm going to recommend is you're going to have to use uh, ES File Explorer or any file uh, managing program that you have or use, and you're going to want to create uh, two new folders or three new folders or however many of these uh, retro systems you want to put on here. Um, I only have the two, one for the Genesis and one for Nintendo. You're just going to make a new folder, uh, one for each one that you're doing, label it something that's easy for you to remember. This is where you're going to store all your games. It's going to make it a lot easier to keep everything in one nice neat place so it's really easy to find. 
So that way when it comes time to play your games, you go to load your ROMs, you don't have to search all over the place to try and find them. Okay, and the next step now is we have to get the uh, emulators. Uh, these are the two that I'm using right now. I highly recommend the Gen Plus Droid. It's one of the best ones out there. Works really, really well. Uh, everything just comes out flawlessly. Uh, the Retro NES is a new one for me. Uh, I used to have a different one that I used to use, but I can't seem to find it anymore on the market. But uh, this one's pretty good, and when you actually download it, it comes with a few uh, preloaded games. So it makes uh, getting your games a little bit easier. Uh, I was able to find like Contra on here, and I think maybe even Castlevania. Um, but uh, that's the next step after this, is to find uh, where you can download these games from. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so in order to find your uh, ROMs for the games for these emulators, you're going to want to go to a website called MU Paradise. Uh, you can really go to anywhere. You can do a Google search and try to find different uh, sources for this. This is just one that I happen to use that uh, works out pretty well. All the download sizes are extremely small because we're dealing with really, really old games. You know, less than uh, a few megabytes for most of them. And sometimes they're even just a few kilobytes. Uh, that's just the way the games were back then. But uh, you can see here they got all the different popular ROMs for uh, Super Nintendo, uh, PlayStation 1, PSP, PlayStation 2, so on and so forth. So all you do is just come here to find the systems that you're working with and then go ahead and do a search for the games that you want. Okay, so for this one we're going to go ahead and we're going to look for, say, a Sega Genesis game. Uh, you're going to click on the ROMs, ISOs, and games. Go ahead and scroll down and you're going to see all these different systems that are supported here. Uh, you got the Sega CD 32X, uh, regular Sega CD, Dreamcast, uh, the Sega Genesis, that's the one we're going to go for right now. And then you have your A through Z listings for whatever games you want. Uh, let's go ahead and click on J here, click on anything you want for any game you want. And you see all these different games here. I'm looking for a very specific one. Let's see, we got Jurassic Park. Uh, I remember that from when I was younger, really good fun game, extremely hard, I can never get past this like second or third level. Um, also you're going to want to pay attention here where it says Japan, Europe, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, if you're looking for a very specific game, make sure it's the one for the region that you've played in. Um, as far as supporting the different regions, I think most of the emulators will do that. Uh, you just might end up with uh, some text that uh, you don't understand because it might be written in a foreign language, but that really just depends on how the games were developed and how they've been ported. Okay, next step, go down to download links. This all is going to show you some screenshots of the game. This is definitely the game that I remember. Um, you can go ahead and choose your different uh, emulators there, uh, so on and so forth. Um, right there for Android. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just go ahead and download whatever games you want. And then uh, we'll go on and move on to the next steps. Okay, so now this is the 6-axis controller application that you download. This is what allows you to connect your uh, PlayStation 3, 4 controller to your Pine64 board so that you can play the games. Now when you first open up this application, this is the screen you're going to be greeted with. Um, you're going to want to click on the Start button here. Uh, if yours end up being like mine, you're probably going to get a lot of failed driver loading. Uh, it's going to give you nothing but trouble. Um, here's how you fix that. You're going to click on settings, go into your general settings, and then the connection method. And you're going to want to try a bunch of these different connections. Uh, one, two, and three did not work for me. Uh, but once I finally tried number four, uh, I was able to connect without any issues. So we'll go ahead and select number four. Now we'll go back to the beginning and then we'll click on start. Give it a moment for it to load up. Uh, when you first do this, it's going to ask for permission uh, for the rooted system to be able to connect. Uh, just go ahead and allow that. Uh, give it a moment. Once you see the lights start blinking on your PlayStation 3 or 4 controller, go ahead and push the uh, PlayStation button. After a moment, now you can see this is all working. I'm just uh, using the navigation to get around. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you can actually also go into the settings to try and map out your different buttons. Um, you know, for the A, B, C, uh, X, Y, Z, for the Sega Genesis uh, controller, so on and so forth. Um, but that's going to vary from uh, system to system, game to game, obviously. Uh, so once we've done that, let's go ahead and fire up a game. Okay, now that we've got our 6-axis controller uh, all loaded up and everything's working, 
Uh, let's go ahead and we'll check out the uh, retro NES here first and I'll show you what that's like. Um, now this is a free app, uh, like I said it does give you access to a bunch of free games, there's like I think over a hundred free games that you can get uh, access to with this. Um, but the biggest downside of this is that it does have ads. Uh, as you'll see as we're going to load up a game, uh, the ads are just going to constantly pop up. But once you start playing the game, uh, you will not see any ads. Uh, so, you know, this is a free app, so it's great in that sense. Um, but, you know, everybody's got to make a couple of bucks uh, one way or another, and they did put a lot of work into this. Um, so, you know, the ads are there, a little annoying, but it's something you have to deal with. Uh, so to play one of the games that came preloaded with it, you're going to click on this. Um, that'll show you the whole list. If you want to load a game of your own, just going to click on Settings. Uh, load and then you're gonna have to go and search for the file so let's uh, check that out first and here's our first ad and we're gonna click on load and I just want to get to let's see try and find where our folder is hidden There we go. So here's the NES, and I have the Excite Bike, which is the Japan slash USA version. Click on that, click on continue, and boom, there's Excite Bike. And as you can see, my controller is working to select the game. And the pausing works just by hitting the start button on the PlayStation 3 controller. Now the controllers with this uh, ROM are a little uh, wonky sometimes. Um, again, it has to do with the, the button mapping, so it's something you'll have to play around with in order to get it to work. But, uh, you know, it does work, works pretty well. It's something you can play around with and definitely have some fun with. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out what the games come with this. Okay, click on the little controller button there close out the next annoying ad. You're going to want to hit uh, restart games. If you click continue, whatever game you were playing last, it's going to throw you right back into that. And now you can see all these different games we have here. So let's go ahead and see if uh, we can get this Batman game here to load up. Oh, it throws me into Contra. I don't know why it does that. Again, it's not the most perfect app I've ever seen. Uh, for whatever reason, it really seems to like the uh, the Contra game and throws me into it quite often. So let me see if I can get a different game here to load just so I can show you guys what it's like. Uh, again, click on the restart game. And, uh, actually, I'll go through it. I'll show you, you know, some of the list here. You know, we're up to 60 games, 80. There's 100. And it just keeps on going and going and going. Uh, let's check out what the Super Mario, let's see if we can get that one to load here for us. There you go. Regular Super Mario. Classic game. Who doesn't know this game? Who hasn't played this game? And I died already. But there you go. That's a quick demonstration of the uh, NES emulator, the different games you can get access to. And then, like I said, if you go to the emulator websites, uh, you can get pretty much any game you're looking for, um, and uh, just go ahead and have fun with it. Let's check out uh, what the Gem Plus Droid looks like next. Okay, here we are. We're getting ready to fire up a game. As you can see so far, this has been extremely easy. Uh, I think the most time-consuming thing for me was uh, messing around with some of the uh, button mapping uh, and playing around with it just to make sure that I got it to work uh, fairly well. So uh, here's how we load the game. Just go ahead and click on your... Gen Plus Droid, give it a moment to load up. You're going to go to Load ROM, and then you have to search for the folder where you stored everything. Like I said, you want to give it a name or something that you can easily recognize. Uh, once you get into here, where you see uh, your different data folders, just scroll down, and boom, here's the Genesis folder that I stored it in. Here's the zip file for Royal Rumble that you see me playing in the beginning. We'll go ahead and click on that. Give it a moment, boom, loads right up. Now you're playing your Sega Genesis games. And I uh, will go ahead and play for a few seconds here just so you can see how well uh, the controller connects to it. And as you can see, I'm going ahead and I'm going up and down. Everything's working fine.
So I'll choose my player, I'll let the computer choose my opponent for me. Now you can see a little artifact right there in the middle of the screen. Little things like that are going to pop up from time to time. It's not 100% perfect, but uh, I've only seen this happen with uh, that little listing right there right before the match, but never anything while I was actually playing the game. The games always run pretty much fairly well. Uh, once in a while I do notice that the controller buttons kind of get a little haywire. Um, it might be because I've used both the uh, button mapping from uh, Gen Plus Droid and also for the 6 access controllers, I think uh, I might have mixed up a few buttons and so every once in a while they kind of conflict with each other. But for the most part, everything seems to run perfectly well. And so uh, there you have it, that's how you do it. Quick, simple, easy. Take you maybe a half an hour to do it at the most and then you're on your way to playing games. Uh, it's really great, you can load up all these different systems, load up all these different games on there, take them with you wherever you want to a friend's house and just hook it up to the TV. Um, the best thing about this, uh, other than not having to lug around one of these old systems, is that uh, you know it's nice and compact and it works off of HDMI. It's getting harder and harder to find um, TVs and or receivers that have uh, all these multiple connections for all these older systems. So that's why I have to be very careful about what TVs and whatnot that I buy. But with this, again, it's HDMI. You hook it up, you plug it in, you're ready to go, and there you have it. If you guys got any questions, comments, leave them below and I'll be sure to respond. Thanks for watching.